Oh, hello! <laughs> I finally, I finally managed to make this work. Yes! Anyways, let's crack on with this. So, last year at War and Peace, I got the pleasure to meet Mr. John Phillips and his family, and uh, he was incredibly nice to me. He gave me full access to his almost one-of-a-kind, uh, well, it used to be his uh, one-of-a-kind Stug 3G um, that he restored. There are only three of that kind left in the world, and he did an amazing job, and this is what he has to say. Hi, my name is John Phillips. I live in uh, Kent in England. I was very lucky to acquire this Sturmgeschutz 3D. Built in 1941 and it was it saw service in North Africa with the Africa Corps and the Zondervaban 288, a very specialist elite unit. Uh, they were equivalent to the British SAS. Um, this vehicle was captured in North Africa after seeing action at El Alamein and many other theatres in North Africa. Um, I acquired it from Kevin Wheatcroft yeah. as a wreck. Um, it took me three years to rebuild um, and it's very unique. There's only three in existence. Oh, wow. One is on a, a, a memorial in Russia and the three that were captured one was dumped in the sea at Tobruk and is still there and the other two, one went to Sweden and one came to England. Um, it took me about three years to rebuild this. Um, I was very lucky, my wife came up with the suggestion of starting the, the Facebook page Stug 3 LC. We've got a lot of support from many people throughout Europe. Uh, many people donated parts, tracks, wheels. That's fantastic. Different parts. Yeah, yeah I was very, very lucky. Um, I drove from England to Prague to collect parts for the gun. I drove to Warsaw to collect parts for the tracks. And on the, my return journey, people would email me on Facebook or message me, ah, we have a wheel if you want it for free, or the tracks we have for free. If you want to come and collect them, then uh, you can have them also. Uh, Bruce from uh, Combat Deal has also donated three uh, of what I call the mushrooms for the engine Bruce Compton, covers. correct? Yeah, yeah Bruce yeah. Compton, a good guy. Um, we found the chassis number 90678, uh, which was a good find because the front had been more or less totally destroyed. They also stamped the numbers on the front here Mm -hmm. um, because if the front got destroyed, then they could identify the crew from inside. Um, it's not, it doesn't have the original engine because it was just too expensive. I tried to do the build on a budget, an affordable budget. Uh, the Rolls, I used the Rolls-Royce 432 motor, transmission and steering box, which works very well. Um, We've been to many shows in England and Europe. We were invited to Miller Tracks in 2017. Lovely show. Yeah. They have grown a lot in recent yeah, years. Yeah. Show. yeah. So we've been to that. We come to War and Peace every year, which is on the hat yep. here, which again is a good show. Um, and we meet a lot of good American people and friends, and we share a cigar and a beer. <laughs> uh, no, we have a lot of fun, and it's uh, good That's fun. lovely. You're living the dream. Like, yes, you're definitely I'm very living. Lucky, very yeah, lucky. you are. Thank you so much for the video. You're welcome. Thank you.
These were the, the air filters. <sighs> so I'm currently inside. The <laughs> this is very interesting because when climbing, when I climbed the vehicle, I noticed that um, there was no really driver's hatch. So I literally had to lay down <laughs> on top of the the. Oh, I'm so tired. So I pretty much had to um, lay down on top of the machine gun gun breach. Um, how do you say in English? Board protection. Um, in order to get the lock that is inside. It's very interesting. This is amazing. Okay, so what I was trying to explain uh, on that clip with my very poor English at the time. Uh, is that the, the Stug 3G is not like most tanks, it has two hatches and they are very difficult to open. The hatch on the right was open, but the one that I wanted to get in in order to get to the driver's compartment uh, was locked from the inside. And it's one very interesting thing about the Stug Sajwell as well, is that they have a sort of, they have a special key, which is almost like a next key. I have a, a pack of them, but it's almost like a next key. And if you go back to the clip, you put the the key into the hole, and you manage to pray it back open. So that's what's happening there. If we look at the clip and go back, <laughs> you can see I've been waiting to use this for a while. But if you go back. If you see in that area over there, you see a little hole, that's where you insert the key, and then you, that's where you insert it, all right? And then you kind of twist it, and then you kind of try to open the hatch, which is not an easy thing to do because the key is actually very small, and the hatch is very heavy, so it's, opening one of these things was actually, um, was actually an interesting thing to do. As you can see, one person would go on the right and then technically three crew members would go on the left and the driver had to crawl all the way over there. So in the case of emergency, getting out of this one would be a bit of a problem. It's very interesting. I keep on saying it. <laughs> so here's the driver's compartment. The sticks, nice and simple. Pedals, yeah, can see the pedal from here. Just zoom in for you. Very nice and simple system. Then there's the the visors. Looks like the face. <laughs> Another one. So yeah, um, on this vehicle in particular, uh, John Philip he was saying that he chose to only have two seats just because it's easier for him to get in uh, in the driver's compartment or in the driver's seat, I would say. Yeah, everything well detailed. Do not touch. <laughs> On bridge, there's a little bit of light coming from the mantlet. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> we are not done yet, you silly woman. We are just getting to the best part. Um, you know, when John Philip said that he's vehicle was in a wreck um, when he got it this is what this is what he means by it before I continue I'd like to thank mr. Craigmore uh, for allowing me to use his photos 
Uh, if you don't know who he is, check out tank slash hunter.com. I'll also post in the description down below some more links. He's also a book author. He has, uh, I think, two books out and they are very much worth the read. Around 2013, Mr. John Phillips traded a World War II German Schwimmwagen for that wreck and he turned that wreck into this. And if this is not a testament for a man's skill and commitment uh, and, and dedication, I don't know what it is. You know, and to give you a little bit of more detail, not too much, if you want to read more about this vehicle, go to tankhunter.com, like I said before. Uh, but I took this little, you know, quote, this little excerpt from Craig Moore's page that says, John Stug 3 of D was shipped to North Africa in 1941 to equip the German Afrika Corps. It was captured by the, by the British near Alamein in Egypt and put on a ship and sent to England for evaluation and tests. The army then used it as a target in Pier Bright fire range where it was rescued by Kevin Wheatcroft. It has a serial chassis number of 90678. And ever since I recorded that footage, Mr. John Phillips has now uh, sold his Stug 2G, his very rare Stug 2G, uh, to the US uh, to drivetanks.com. So if you want to check out the page, I'll also leave the link down, uh, down below. There's also probably a clip passing in the background. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this little upgrade in the channel. I'm sincerely, um, my English is not very good at the moment, but I am hoping to be uploading more frequently in the future. And um, thank you so much for watching everyone. I sincerely hope that you're staying safe, that you're doing well in life. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Also, besides liking and subscribing to this channel, one way you can support is by buying my merch. We have plenty of Stug Life designs. So if you want to be part of the Stug Life, just check the description down below and uh, get on the Vogue mood. Bye. <laughs> And ever since I recorded that footage, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking to myself, is it a swim wagon because it swims? <laughs> I'm not. I am not proud of this. <laughs>